Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, Routing and Switching Essentials. This is chapter 5 and it's section 5.3, Layer 3 Switching. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure InterVLAN routing using Layer 3 Switching and troubleshoot InterVLAN routing in a Layer 3 switched environment. Routers versus multi-layer switches. Routers and multi-layer switches both perform routing, connecting different networks, or connecting remote networks. Routers may have a different types of interfaces. They might have Ethernet, serials, and other, while multi-layer switches will only have Ethernet interfaces. While routers can be used to segment local area network devices, their major use is wide area network devices. Each device does have its own advantages. Routers are the backbone device of large intranets and of the internet. They operate at layer 3, network layer of the OSI model. They make decisions based on the network addresses like IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Switch network design. So when we are designing our network, we have a layer 2 switches and layer 3 switches. Layer 3 switches, they work at access layer. Access layer provides access to the end devices and provides port security. So here, I mark it here that is our access layer right so from here to here like that so these ones they provide access to our pcs they provide access to the to the phones ip phones so that what they do they provide access to the devices that's what the name come from access layer switch and as well as port security then these access layer switches they all connect to the distribution layer switches distribution layer switches at these are layer 3 devices and they do support routing as well as uh, ACLs access control list so as a packet or frame for example or packet frame as it comes into layer 2 layer 2 will find out okay well is it correct port what VLAN does it belong as it's going towards the layer 3 device the layer 3 device looks at like okay what's an ACL does it have permission to go in or not and then if it does what is the route to take it to the destination and then we have a layer three uh, core, layer three, which is core, root switch packets quickly across between across between distribution multi-layer switches. Multi-layer switch, interview and routing. Multi-layer switches can perform layer two and layer three functions, replacing the need for the dedicated routers. So as it's going towards layer two switch, layer two sends it to the distribution layer, that's our layer three switch. It will do the routing for us and it will send it towards the other destination. Multi-layer switches supports dynamic routing and inter-VLAN routing. On a multi-layer switch, a logical layer 3 interface can be configured for any VLAN. With a multi-layer switch, traffic is routed internally to the switch device. The routing process is suitable and scalable solution because we remember the, the router on the stick, the bandwidth that was a problem. With a multi-layer switch, we can create uh, virtual interfaces as many as we want. Everything is happening in the RAM, so there's no there's no uh, uh, bottleneck. Multi-layer switch interfaces. On the multi-layer switch, we have a logical interfaces, or they're called SVIs, logical interface, the SVIs, switch virtual interface, or we actually have the physical interface that we can work with. Perform both layer two switching and inter VLAN routing. Layer two interfaces, they will ac access or trunk port, it can be either an access port or trunk port. Layer 3 interfaces has an IP address assigned to it, the default gateway for any host connected to that interface or VLAN. Physical interfaces, same as the router, aka router port. Example interface Gigabit01. Logical interface represents the entire VLAN. Switch virtual interface, example interface VLAN10. Okay, so uh, by default, the all the physical interfaces on the router or layer 2 right so you have to make sure that we we move them from layer 2 to layer 3 if we try and give an IP address if we uh, convert them from layer 2 into layer 3 then we can give an IP address and they are called now they are called the phys rooted port also known as a rooted port in example we go to that physical interface and we give an IP address now anything connected to that interface they can use that as a gateway so for example say that you connect you have another layer 2 switch here and you have a PCs connected to it and so on. 
switch virtual interface, we create these for VLANs. So you can have SVI, for example, for VLAN 10. You can have one SVI for that. And all the command is interface VLAN 10. That's how you create the switch virtual interface. And then give an IP address there. So rooted ports, they are just like a router. The port has an IP address mask that makes it a member of that subnet. So those are the rooted port. So these are the physical, actually physical ports. And then we have a virtual port. Virtual ports, they are in the RAM. The switch is a member of an IP subnet VLAN. All switch ports that are a member of that VLAN can communicate with each other, with the switch. So switch virtual interface. So the, you have to know that there's two interfaces, well, rooted ports. These are the physical interfaces on the switch. So the layer three switch, you can just go there and make it a rooted port. Or you can create a layer three a virtual interface. Layer 3 functionality can also be enabled for the entire VLAN. The IP address is assigned to the logical interface, the VLAN. This is needed when routing is required between VLANs. SVI, switched virtual interface, no physical connection. VLAN must be created before the SVI can be used. The IP address associated with the VLAN interface is the default gateway of the workstations. So to create the SVI, so for here, here we're going to create an SVI for VLAN 10 and here this SVI for VLAN 10 and we're going to create an SVI for VLAN 20 so all these guys they're going to have that virtual interface as a gateway so VLANs have been created interface range FA01 to 12 we put them an access port tell them that it's end device connected to it we make sure that they access in VLAN 10 we do the same for the red VLAN so VLAN 20 and then we go and create uh, our virtual interfaces so interface VLAN 10, that just creates the SVI. We give it a description that connects to the engineer in VLAN, and we give an IP address. So all these devices now, they're gonna use the SVIs as a default gateway. We do the same for VLAN 20. So 192.168.20.1 is a gateway for all the red or IT VLANs. Cool. Multi-layer switch interfaces, uh, layer two or layer three interface, it's a switch port, right? So if it's a switch port, it's default on the most catalyst switches as a layer two. Default on catalyst 6500 is layer three. To verify, show interface, the interface in question, and then switch port. If it's a layer two, think of a switch port, this equals a layer two, right? Enabled for layer two. If it's no switch or if it's disabled, that's working as layer three. So if it's enabled, if you see switch port enabled, that means it's working at layer two. If it's disabled, then it's layer three. To do to make it disabled, to make it a layer three port, we need to convert it from layer two. But the command is go to that interface and say no switch port. That will disable it, the switch port and it will start working now as a layer three port. And then if it's a layer three port, we can go to that interface, give an IP address and so on. If we want to send it back to layer two port, layer two, we just go and type interface G02 and the command is switch port. That makes it a layer two, convert it to layer two. Inter VLAN routing, it can be, this like a review. This is uh, external routers, legacy, each each interface had to be for individual VLANs. The good thing here is there is no bottleneck. So if VLAN one sends in, sends information here, comes back here at let layer three, uh, VLAN three, and so on. Now you can have root on the stick all the VLANs, not scalable. The first one, this is scalable, but there's a bottleneck. It's a problem here. Then we have multi-layer switch, which we create a, a VLAN a sub interface, a virtual interface, sorry, for each VLAN. Multi-layer switches, the between the switch and the, and the switch, layer two switch and layer three switch, that should be truncated. SDM, or Cisco Switch Database Manager, SDM, is a Catalyst 2960 switches, can function as a layer three device and route between VLANs and a limited number of static routes. The Cisco Switch D Database Manager provides multiple templates for the 2960 switch, the templates can be enabled to support specific roles depending on the how the switch is used on the network. For example, the SDM LAN-based routing, LAN-based-routing 
Templates can be enabled to allow the switch to root between VLANs and to support static routing. So with command show SDM prefer, applies to the default uh, show SDM prefer commands, applies the default templates. Default does not support static routing. An IPv6 address has been enabled. The, IP, the template will be dual IPv4 and IPv6 default. Show SDM prefer to change the template. So go to the global configuration mode and then type SDM prefer. And you can choose default. This doesn't support IPv6, it doesn't support routing. And you can't put bits in VLANs. If you don't enable the IPv6, then you can configure dual IPv4 and IPv6 default. And LAN based routing actually does support routing, making route between different VLANs. And quality service is for priority. Now, this SDM is like it's like a gear to default is gear for the MAC addresses, learning MAC addresses, switching the frames between the different ports and so on. If you want to like more stop like a little bit less that and more about the routing, then you have to change it to SDM prefer LAN based routing. And then once you're done, you have to re reload for it to take effect. Switch must be reloaded for new templates to take effect. So to, to verify that your LAN based routine has been taken effect, say show SDM prefer, and it should say LAN based routine template is active. With this template, static routing is supported for up to 750 static routes. Functionality IPv4 routing, functionality on 29600. Interface FA06 on S1 is assigned to VLAN 2, FA06. So VLAN 2. So switchboard access VLAN 2. Interface VLAN 1, given IP address. Interface VLAN 2, given IP address. And then, and then if you want to do the switch, enable the routing, type IP routing. So enable routing. And then we can see it on the command on the routing table, show IP root. So the switch will start building the routing table. It starts behaving like a router. The SVIs for VLAN 1 and 2 are also configured with IP address. And IP routing is enabled with IP routing global configuration command. A default route is configured on S1. So for example, IP root, that's our default. So if I mark it here, it's our default. We're gonna send it to the neighbor. So when you do show IP root, we can see our default route there. Thank you very much for watching this section 5.3, layer three switching. Please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Asri Krasnici. Bye-bye.